As is customary, once former President Trump officially becomes the Republican Party's presidential nominee this summer, he will start to receive briefings from intelligence agencies. Now, this practice was started back in the 1950s by President Harry Truman to ensure a smooth transition to power. So technically, it's business as usual here. But this is the first time that a candidate will receive those briefings while under indictment for mishandling classified documents. And that underscores the importance of getting some resolution in the classified documents case itself. Now, we still do not know when that trial will actually happen. It has been one week since Judge Eileen Cannon heard arguments on scheduling that trial. Special counsel Jack Smith wants the trial to start in July, while Trump's attorneys say the earliest the trial should start is August, although they would really prefer never. Judge Cannon's ultimate decision here has the potential to create chaos on Trump's legal calendar. The later she schedules her trial, the more likely she is to block any January 6 election interference trial from being going from going to trial before the election. And now we have learned that next Thursday, Judge Cannon will hear arguments by Team Trump to dismiss the documents case altogether. David Latt joins me now. He's a former federal prosecutor, a columnist at Bloomberg Law, and the host of the Original Jurisdiction podcast. It's great to see you, David. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Alex. So how do you read the tea leaves on the fact that Judge Cannon is scheduling a hearing on a motion to dismiss before she's even set a trial date? Is that, a, is that not a great sign for people who are hoping to see this trial come to fruition? Well, she has a lot of work to get through because the Trump team has basically filed a kitchen sink of motions to dismiss. So she's kind of handling them piecemeal. She's going to tackle two of them in the coming week. But then there are a whole bunch after that. Do you think the idea that she has she's she won't even I mean, I guess, did, is it a window into her psyche that that the scheduled trial date is remains so nebulous? Or should we just think this is a matter of housekeeping? She's going to tick through the list of these pretrial motions before she actually decides that. I think she will probably set a trial date in between because, again, there are a whole bunch of these motions and there are a lot of moving parts here. So I think we'll get a trial date soonish, but we may also have a better sense of the trial date once she rules on some of these motions, which yeah. would affect the, the trial date. I, I don't think these motions are going to get granted, although with Judge Cannon, you can't be sure. Well, yeah, and let's talk about that, because she is accepting amicus briefs, um, which is friend of the court briefs, sort of supporter briefs yeah. for Trump's case as he tries to seek a motion to dismiss. Now, I always thought amicus briefs were like yearbook signatures, <laughs> like the more you had, the better it was, because it could just say, like, I got a lot of people on my side. But she said that she thinks the amicus briefs may be of considerable help to her. It is not going out on a limb to say this is a judge who does not have a lot of experience in a case like this. And I, 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 I am concerned, as I think other people might be, that she would be leaning too heavily on pro-Trump amicus briefs in a motion to dismiss. So I wouldn't be... Uh, there are things to worry about here, but I don't know that I would be super worried about that. That language comes from the rules in the Supreme Court regarding amicus briefs, and there's not a similar rule for district courts or trial courts where Judge Cannon is. So it's kind of like a copy-paste thing. I think she's basically just saying, okay, let him in. It's fine. Now, look, she may be quite susceptible to the argument in those briefs, which is that uh, Jack Smith is not lawfully appointed, but I don't I wouldn't read too much into her agreeing to have them filed. Do you, um, you said on the Stay Tuned podcast that you think Judge Cannon is on thin ice. There's been a lot of talk about whether she could be taken off this case entirely. Uh, where do you think she stands now? So I don't think Jack Smith would wants to remove her. I think he would rather not do that because it is something of an extreme measure. She did get some adverse rulings from the 11th Circuit, including yeah. from Trump appointees twice. Uh, and so that was in the case that was in the pre-indictment phase of this case when it was a civil case brought by Trump. Totally bizarre kind of situation. Um, she ruled in favor of him in a really wacky way. And so that's why I think if she does something else, you know, it's sort of like a three strikes and you're out kind of situation. Um, but again, I, I don't think Jack Smith wants, wants to do that. That would theoretically slow things down, would it not? Yes, exactly. They would have to reassign. They would have to find another judge. I, I think he's kind of keeping his fingers crossed, but I, I think we're also aware of the possibility that, yes, Judge, Judge Cannon could go rogue again. Well, yeah, and I think that then there's the whole question of what she can do to the rest of the calendar. Let's just start this conversation with 
or let's continue this conversation with uh, an opinion you hold that I think is a hard one for people who seek accountability for Donald Trump to hear. But talk to me about your view on the chances that the federal election interference case actually goes to trial before November. Uh, I think that's under 5%, really low. Uh, of course, we now have this Supreme Court immunity appeal that's sort of gumming up the situation. That's probably not going to be decided by the Supreme Court until June. Then we do have some weeks or months of trial prep, as Judge Chutkin, who's presiding over that D.C. case, has stated. Plus, this Mar-a-Lago documents case could go to trial in July or August, in which case it would bump the January 6 D.C. case. Is there any way the Mar-a-Lago case, the, the Judge Cannon can schedule the Mar-a-Lago case for the late summer, block the D.C. election interference case, and then delay the Mar-a-Lago case after that. I mean, I'm just looking yes. for the worst case possibility. That is, like, but is that possible? Yes, because trial judges have a lot of discretion, have a lot of leeway in setting these trial dates, and something took longer than expected, ruling on the motions. There, there's The classified documents in this case are creating a lot of complexities. What you outline, Alex, could definitely happen. Oh, my God. It's Friday night, David. Laugh, please. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to come back to you many times over, and perhaps your opinion will change as we get more information. <laughs>